Group E's, virtually showroom type sedans, forming up for eight laps of torture around Eastern Creek and to be headed from pole position by Peter Fitzgerald ahead of his Goodyear teammate in the Falcon, Jim Zerifos, then it's Wanless in the Falcon, Boz and Jack in the Commodore, McDonald Commodore, Foreshore in that beautiful Suzuki Swift, backed up by Mark Frame in car 42, Lewis in the Commodore, Levin and Watkinson, Commodore versus Corolla, then Burton in the Lancer, and Dare, another Suzuki Swift. A little bit of movement by Wanless, but he steadies it before the flag drops. They bolt away, and it is Zerifos from the outside of the front row doing fractionally better than Fitzgerald. Not quite, yes, he is. And going with him is Boss and Jack. And they still haven't sorted it out, still not resolved. Fitzgerald ought to be trying to hang on down the inside of Boz and Jack, and he does. Says, pardon me, I'll have this. And car number eight in there is Gordon Levin. So, most of them managing to get through, but here's a big problem. Gee, Levin just fed it back on, and he did it well, John Smith. He could have T-boned about three of them. He's very lucky, man, to get back on again, Levin, but he made it. It was shades of the previous race meeting here, which caused a major disaster for about five cars. And clear of all the mayhem is Jim Zerifos. Fitzgerald is Boz and Jack. Zerifos opened a good gap now. He's got a good lead for a half a lap. been excellent. 65 minute penalty. Mr. Todd Wanless. And it's why he got it, because he was nearly up on the front row of the grid by the time they uh, dropped the, the flag. But he was stationary and then got away badly. But the rules still say, John Smith, don't they? Yes. That uh, he if you've be, moved, if you've moved penalized. past the line, then uh, it's considered a bit of penalty. So there are Fosbergs versus Fitzgerald in the order that they've generally been this year. Very hard man to toss, Mr. Zerifos. 0.3 of a second only is advantage, but it's enough, and it's 2.94. Back to third placed, Boz and Jack. So these two romping away and doing virtually identical lap times. Here's a move from Fitzy up the inside. He should have this. Looks like uh, Zerifos just opened the door and let him in. He yeah. does. So Commodore goes to lead over Falcon. I don't remember you doing those sort of things to Fitzy, uh, Mal. No, um, Peter and I tend to uh, rub our door handles and mirrors more than uh, let each other past. The 11's about to make a move on Boston Jack. 0.4 of a second between the leading pair, but back to this battle between Levin and Boz and Jack. 4.15 now, really lengthening. Jack down the inside again, and he's right got in. away with it. A few of a locked up break. Levin's going nowhere at this stage. But if he can hang there, he'll hit him over yes. the next section. Yes. And all he's got to do is run him out wide here as Levin prepares for this sweeping right-hander. He goes right in the uphill. That's what you call running wide. <laughs> <laughs> Bit I, re of push. I reckon I might go all right. Just can you get the right idea? <laughs> Just turn slightly left. Let's let Lewis catch up to the pair for again, and if I was living, I'd be a bit worried about that. Oh, oh. there's Lewis. Very spectacular boy. <laughs> Imagine what would happen if he tidied up his act, because he's in among them. That's right. We're wasting all sorts of amount of time. That's Terry Lewis in number seven. Todd Wanless in 65 has come through. One of the few Falcons here, despite the success of Jim Zerifos. Putting your money down Melrose on the car next year, as you hope to do, what would you go, Commodore or Falcon? Well, I, I'd have to stick with the Ford product. It's, it's a better, better balanced car, right through under brakes and, and power. I'd stick with the Ford for next year. All tracks considered, is the more winning car of the two? Well, look at this little battle. Sorry, Mel, we'll That's come right, back to right. it. No. Todd Wanless squeezing his way through in the Falcon, trying to hang on to Terry Lewis and well, not saying sorry to the Suzuki, but saying uh, you don't mind if I ignore you. 
and that's 43 Jeff Forshaw. Yeah, no, it, it's a fantastic form of racing, these Falcons and, and Commodores. And, uh, you know, if I had the choice, you know, I did have both cars this year, and, and the Falcon has won six out of eight of the production car round. So the Falcon was a dominant vehicle on all circuits. And dominating at the moment is the Falcon. He's up zero Foss. He's got through up the inside. There's a move on Fitzy. building their margin over third place and it's Fitzgerald to the lead beautiful slip streaming yeah, it's good move he, he's dived in the inside the right time and, and uh, obviously he's got a little bit up his sleeve but I still think that uh, so is Zerifos Mr Fitzgerald being a little bit generous there yes leaving a gap bit of debris being picked up off some other cars side by side Fitzgerald was on the wrong side but he leapt back and decided to follow Zerifos through so it's the regular order of Zerifos Fitzgerald heading towards the finishing line Ford Falcon ahead of Holden Commodore Fitzgerald coming down beside him though heading towards the finishing line in what could be a real upset the crowd is up on its feet and cheering as Commodore in front it's Fitzgerald by half a car length over Jim Zerifos into second place on this occasion. Great finish to this Group B race. Into third, Terry Lewis, and one can hardly believe that. Seven, and then nine coming down. Charging through was Gary McDonald, just dispatching Jeff Forshaw in 43. So nine, just at the flag, also grabbed one position better but the man who did it better than anybody was Peter Fitzgerald Peter Fitzgerald and Jim Zerifos sensational racing uh, is this the end of Falcon domination at Eastern Creek Peter well you know it's a bit sad to say that our cars come good at the end of the year but it's looking good for next year and uh, you know at least we can give Jim a hard time now so we're really pleased with the day's result you know he's a hard man to race against and if he hadn't put a, a foot off the dirt at the last my brakes were a bit sus at the end and he got under me over there. I didn't want to hit him because we are teammates. <laughs> and I put a wheel off. Now he put a wheel off which enabled him to get the run down inside of him. Jim, you've still been the dominant force here at Eastern Creek in this series production series this year. Uh, and what's your feeling as the series now wraps up? The, uh, the Falcons still have the advantage on uh, some, of the, some of the sections, but uh, with the development Peter's been doing over the last couple of weeks, there's, uh, the, the, the gap has been bridged and there's not much in it in qualifying peter was a dash quicker and uh i think it's a sign of the times maybe uh it's a time for commodores to be quicker here but we'll be out doing our best again next time and uh, try to beat beat him again